This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer the question, can you increase that maximum supply of 21 million Bitcoin? This is a question I've been getting a lot. I just got it from Finance Hub in one of the comments, basically saying the number of Bitcoins can be increased from 21 million with a new protocol. So your submission is factually incorrect when you say the number of Bitcoins can never be increased. Now, many of you will actually be surprised when you hear me say that Finance Hub is correct. It's actually quite easy to increase the max supply of Bitcoin. All you need to do, especially if you have some programming skills, is you download the Bitcoin Core software. This is the, the software that the whole network runs on that has these rules, such as the halving every four years, the, the maximum supply of 21 million, uh, etc. I think you can do it from GitHub. This is probably how you would do it. I'm not a developer myself, but you can download the code. You could find that line where it says uh, 21 million max cap supply, and you could just change it. Let's say we change it to 22 million. So now we have a new and improved version of Bitcoin. There are more coins for everyone. This seems like a really generous thing to do. And so now I have my new and improved version of Bitcoin, and I decide to send it all out uh, to all of the full nodes and ask them to run my software. So this is a map of the full nodes, at least the ones that are reachable. You can see they're all over the world. And these are the actors that really control Bitcoin because they run the underlying software. And these nodes speak to each other. What they do is when a new block is mined, they take a look at the block, they make sure that it's following the rules, that the miner did the proper amount of proof of work, that uh, no one is sending Bitcoin that they don't own, etc. And they also monitor to make sure that bit new Bitcoin aren't being created any faster than they should be, apart from just that 6.25 new Bitcoin every 10 minutes. So these are the guys who really control the network. They all talk to each other. Their machines all talk to each other. And they're running the Bitcoin core software. So I bring my new software to them that has the 22 million uh, cap instead of the 21 million cap. And I say... Uh, will you run my Bitcoin? Now, if you're running a full node, there's a 99% chance, it's probably even higher than that, that you also own some Bitcoin. No one's going to be running a full node. Maybe a university professor who wants to study uh, blockchain data or something. But the, for the most part, certainly above 95%, maybe even higher, own some actual Bitcoin. So now I come to you, the full node operator, I contact you by email or text or whatever, or DM, say, Hey, full node operator, please run my new Bitcoin software. It's just a little bit better because it has more coins for everyone and more money is always good. The full node operator says to himself, well, I currently own 10 Bitcoin out of the 21 million future supply. Under the new system, I'm still going to own that 10 Bitcoin, but this time it's going to be out of 22 million supply. In other words, if I accept your software upgrade, I'm going to now own a smaller percentage of the total Bitcoin. And running the software will basically dilute my own holdings of Bitcoin. No thanks. Not interested in running it. I'm fine just with 21 million. You can print up an extra million uh, for your buddies, but I'm not interested in running your software. And you can go to all these nodes in the world. And uh, I would say there's very close to a 0% probability that you'll be able to get any of them to run your new software. The only ones who would do it perhaps would be the ones who uh, don't own any Bitcoin. So maybe out of this 10,000 nodes that are listed here, maybe you get 100 guys who are willing to run your new software. Maybe they're sort of rogue actors. And so now you have a new coin. You have a new coin. It's not really Bitcoin. And you've got 10, you've got a, a what did I say? 100 nodes running it. They're all talking to each other. And uh, maybe some miners start mining it as well. But then you have this problem. Who is going to accept this new money? When the miners go to sell their newly owned Bitcoin, that has this slight protocol change, when they send it to the exchange, it's not going to be verified by the exchange full node. There's basically no one in the world who would want to buy this new form of Bitcoin, maybe one of those hundred node operators. But what you would have is a very small splinter group of people. And it'd be very difficult for, uh, it'd be very difficult to even price these coins. What price would a new, a, a new Bitcoin that has 22 million coins trade at? you'd have to have some sort of consensus between the 100 nodes. And it's very unlikely that anyone outside of that would uh, would want to buy 
any of these Bitcoin. I know that I know that I wouldn't. And so you could have this private form of money, this new code that maybe a hundred people in the world are really excited about, but that doesn't matter. Bitcoin marches on. The whole world knows about it. This is what billionaires buy. When Michael Saylor comes to buy some more Bitcoin, he's not gonna be buying my new and improved 22 million uh, max cap Bitcoin. So this is the problem and this is what uh, Finance Hub gets wrong. You can increase the software. You can, I could change the software to say that uh, every time a new Bitcoin is mined, why don't you send me uh, half a Bitcoin? You can do whatever you want to the software. But the difficult thing is recreating the miners and the Bitcoin full node network. There's literally no way to do this because of how the incentives work. You could have a tiny splinter group, as we said, but those coins would be very difficult to sell. And I'm not sure who would even, uh, who would even accept them. 21 million, what really makes Bitcoin run is this social consensus behind Bitcoin. This 21 million numbers become a meme. It's a, uh, a coordinating meme. And it's probably the most important fact about Bitcoin. If the max supply of Bitcoin is ever raised, even by one Bitcoin, by a half a Bitcoin, that will destroy this social consensus that has been in effect for the past 12 years. And when I say if the max supply is ever raised, this would mean that all these full nodes actually run, start running a new version that has a larger supply. At that point though, if you raise the max cap supply and everyone starts running it, even by one Bitcoin, destroys the social consensus, the price of Bitcoin will begin to plummet because what will happen is it will begin to price in and the people who own it will begin to price in future max supply increases. So this year, the max supply is, is uh, 21 million in one Bitcoin, but maybe next year it's going to be 21 million and uh, 1,000 Bitcoins, something like that. For this reason, if the max supply cap is ever raised and all the nodes start running it, or a huge majority of them start running it, I'm out. I would sell my Bitcoin instantly. And it would probably be very difficult to sell your Bitcoin. Bitcoin will plummet. Again, the chances of this are basically uh, very, very close to zero. In this universe, you never want to say something has a 0% probability. But it would be financial suicide for all these runs, all these nodes to run a diluted version of Bitcoin that had more uh, that had more Bitcoin than 21 million. I think it's a similar situation. And the reason the market would price in future supply increases, it's very similar to what happened to the income tax in, uh, in the US, at least. Income tax was a, uh, introduced, I believe, I, I wanted to say it was introduced in 1913. This says 1916. Uh, anywhere, somewhere around that, that the income tax, this is the federal income tax in the US. So for the federal government was 1% for the bottom bracket, and then 7% for the top bracket, which was over $500,000 per year, which is, um, I can't do the adjustment in my head, but it's probably um, probably tens of millions of dollars. And what it is what it is now is this has creeped up into the high 30s or 40s. The bottom bracket is, what is it, 10 or, 10 or 15%. And so once you introduce something and once you introduce some sort of uh, creeping scale, it uh, it will definitely increase over time. And this is something that markets try to price in. And so if you ever try to raise, if the supply cap is ever raised by a significant number of the nodes, then the social consensus is destroyed and it will look something like the income tax where you'd expect the max supply to continue to grow. I could have used the US dollar uh, money supply as an example too, as something that has just kept growing once it was decided that it had no, uh, no bearing or, or no... Um, no backing by gold in 1971 when the US dollar is no longer convertible into gold. This brings up the question, what's going to happen when the last Bitcoin is mined? If we look at this dashboard here, we can see that the last full Bitcoin, if everything goes according to plan, will be mined on March 10th, 2106. So next century. And then the last coin or the last Satoshi will be, um, will be mined about 34 years later. Uh, so last full Bitcoin, all the coins will be issued. There'll be, there'll, there'll be 21 million coins in circulation. Obviously, some of them, some of them have been irret irretrievably lost, or the private keys have been lost or burned, etc. But that's, that's when the last coin will be issued. Obviously, this is more a problem for uh, probably for everyone's grandchildren or great or great, great grandchildren. What's going to happen then, though, is not a problem. Uh, the, once the last Bitcoin is mined or the last fractional Bitcoin is mined, 
you still won't need to increase the supply cap of 21 million. At that point, miners will be paid solely in transaction fees. And the idea is if the Bitcoin blockchain space remains valuable, and right now it's extremely valuable, there's only so much room in each block, people compete for that space by paying transaction fees. And so miners earn transaction fees from you and me sending Bitcoin to each other. And they also earn the, the block subsidy, the 6.25 Bitcoin. Once that block subsidy eventually goes to zero by, what did we say, 2140, then the miners will be paid solely in transaction fees. This probably warrants its own video, but you can see how the supply and demand would work if Bitcoin is still valuable and considered a, a very valuable asset at that point. The fees, the transaction fees should be enough or should reach an equilibrium where the miners are being compensated because you and I sending Bitcoin, paying transaction fees, we really need the miners to stay in business. So there'll be some supply demand equilibrium that is reached in terms of transaction fees. This is actually a very deep rabbit hole. Maybe we'll go down it together at some point. But I hear a lot of people saying, uh, I'm, I'm not going to buy Bitcoin because I don't know what's going to happen in 2140 when the last Bitcoin is mined. This is a little bit like uh, not refusing to buy real estate or being scared to buy real estate in California, for example, because you're worried that someday it may fall into the ocean. I think the way it's situated on the plates, it actually can never fall into the ocean. It can just sort of crunch where San Francisco and Los Angeles become the same city, something like that. But this is the kind of, it's good to, um, it's good to have long time horizons and think about the long-term health of the planet and the long-term health of your family and what you're leaving to them, etc. But not buying Bitcoin because you're worried about what's going to happen in 2140, or even if it gets priced in a little bit early, what's going to happen in 2100 seems to me a little bit like not buying real estate somewhere because you're afraid that the entire landmass is going to fall into the ocean. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.